In this video, I'm going to be starting up my second Kawasaki Z1 Super 6 for the first time, take it for a ride and sort out a few problems. I've been making this bike for almost a year. And this is the first time it's actually come out of the garage into the sunshine. Well, today is a really exciting day. I'm going to try and start my second Z1 Super 6. I've pushed it in the garden. I've left the petrol tank off now because I need to see if the engine runs. And if it does run, we've probably got to balance the carburetors, so I'll do that next. So the first thing I'm going to do is use one of these little plastic bottles, prime the carburetors, and we're going to see if she goes. The bank of six carburetors has two filling points, one on the right and one on the left. So first of all, I connect my tank up to the one on the right. Gently squeeze until the petrol flows in and stops. And I tap the bottom of the carburetors just to make sure the floats are seating okay. Then I fill the left hand side carburetors. And when that's all done, I turn on the ignition, put on the choke, and I'm going to use the kickstarter because I like to fill the engine when it first starts. I hear a bit of a commotion in the garden. It's a pigeon landed for a bath. I don't suppose he'd be there long. so pleased it runs perfect well it's not quite perfect i think the carbs are a bit out of balance and it definitely hangs on the throttle a little bit like my first super six did but the main thing is it started well that was perfect timing tracy's mum and dad have just turned up for lunch we've got sandwiches and cupcakes they're just so nice and we're told to wait for them to cool down alan <laughs> we've got little bits of cherry in mm. I've just had some lunch, come back to the bike, put some more fuel in the carburetors, and it started straight up and idles quite smoothly now. So I think it was just running out of fuel. So I'm going to connect up these fuel filters, put on the tank and side panels, and then we'll have another look at it and maybe I'll take it for a ride. I carefully fit the tank, being extra careful not to knock the tank on the front of the headstock. That's it, straight on. I put a thin smear of grease on the little stubs and then press on the side panels and they pop home nicely. And you can see on this one where I had to cut the side panel to clear the inlet rubbers for the extra cylinders on the outside. With the tank and side panels fitted, I stand back for the first look at the bike complete. I love this red paint. It's beginning to be my favourite. So the next thing to do is put a gallon of petrol in the tank and check for leaks. And the blue Super 6 has come out to supervise. I go inside to get my jacket, helmet and gloves, and then I'm going to take it for a ride.
first test ride, everything worked fine, except the carbs. So I'm going to take them off the bike and give them a thorough examination. But then I bump into Tracy. She's coming out to feed the birds. They eat so much food. She feeds them three times a day. The little sparrows are really nice. They come in and take one piece. Blackbirds take two or three. The pigeons can't even get in. They just bash off the side, which is quite funny to watch. But the worst ones, the starlings, they fly in in pairs and hoover the whole lot up in one go. Back in the garage, I've got the carbs off the bike and all stripped down on my bench to, for a thorough inspection. The first thing I notice is that one of the carburetor bodies has got a blocked air feed, so I take it out into the garden to clean. The back of the carburetor has three holes. One feeds the choke, one feeds the pilot, and one feeds the main jet, and they've all got to be clear. Even the blackbirds come to watch. He's so tame. I use my carburetor jet prickers. They're like pieces of wire of various sizes, and you pick the smallest one first, poke it in the hole, and you gradually increase until it won't fit. It's okay to use this method, but don't go too violent, as you can actually make the hole bigger. And once I've got it clear, I gave it a good squirt through with my carburetor cleaner, and you can see the actual liquid coming out of the holes in, in the carburetor and feel that it's actually going where it needs to go. I pay particular attention to the pilot feed hole in the bottom of the carburetor. It's really important that this is clear. So I check first by squirting some liquid in the back and it actually goes through the carburetor body, squirts out where the pilot jet comes out and also where this hole squirts up into the centre of the carburetor. You can see it clearly here. And in this view, you can see the carburetor cleaner squirting out of the air hole at the back and the actual jet in the centre, showing that everything's clear. Next, I'm going to remove the brass choke tube and clean the holes. So using my blowtorch, I gently warm the body of the carburetor just a little bit and use some pliers and gently grip the tube and twist it out. With the brass tube out, I gently use my jet cleaning wires to poke through the holes, removing any debris. I then check that the drillings in the carburetor are clear by squirting through carburetor cleaner. I'm now checking that the small drilling in the rear of the carburetor is clear. This is the one that feeds the main jet emulsification tube and it's really important that this is really clear. And now I'm checking the choke jet in the float chamber and yep, that's clear. I pay particular attention to the pilot jets, ensuring that all the holes are completely clear. And then, just to make sure, I press a small piece of rubber pipe onto the jet, connect that up to my carburetor cleaner, aerosol, and squirt it through to make sure it's totally clean. And that's just perfect. I feel it's starting to rain, so I go back into the garage to continue. And here I am cleaning the main jet emulsification tubes. These have several holes around the periphery and they all must be completely clear. Once I'm happy everything's clean, I start assembling the carburetors back together. Some of the choke tubes have surface corrosion on them, so I put them in my little battery drill with some steel wool and give them a shine up before I put them back in the carburetor. I get most of it off. There we go, that's much better. The next thing to do is to tap the tubes back into the carburetor bodies using a small hammer. Just a couple of gentle taps is all you need. With the six choke tubes installed, I reassemble the carburetor bodies back into the main bracket, doing up the screws tight.
I then inspected all the needles to make sure they're all 5J9s, which they were, but I did notice a couple were slightly pitted, so I replaced those with good ones. Then I set all the clips into position 4, which is the second groove down from the top, and I installed the needles back into the throttle slides, followed by the linkage mechanism. I then replaced all the throttle slides into the carburetor bodies and connected them up to the main throttle operating mechanism. There's lots of little springs and clips and washers and they've all got to go back together in the correct order, but I get there in the end. Oh, I'm really pleased with that. That's just perfect. They all open and close really nicely and snap shut with a big click, just as they should. The next thing I need to do is adjust the synchronization using my special tool that I made when I was 20 years old and rode a GPZ 1100B2 back in the 80s. To synchronize the carburetors, I need to get all the slides to open and close in unison. So I use a drill that fits underneath the rear of the carburetor until it just slides in and out on one then using my tool, I adjust all the settings until it just slides in on all the rest. And then you can adjust the tick over finally with a tick over screw. And this seems to work for me. There are several ways of doing this. This is just my method. With all the throttle slides synchronized, the next thing to do is to put on the caps and do up the screws. I even use my old Swiss army knife just to tighten them up. With the top of the carburetors complete, I turn them upside down and install the fuel cutoff valves. The next thing I do is thoroughly inspect the floats. It's really important that these are all straight and true, and especially that the whole centre and that piece of strip is in line with the centre of the main piece of plastic, which these weren't. So I use a pair of pliers to line everything up so it's dead true. Just by eye. There we go, that's much better. Another thing to note is that the tang should be dead level, not pointing up or down. This will give the correct float height of 24 millimetres from the gasket surface to the bottom of the float. I just use a pair of pliers to make sure it's totally flat. With all the floats checked, I start to assemble them into the carburetor bodies by gently sliding in the pivot pin. It's always good to check the floats move freely. There should be no sticking. They should just bounce up and down on the spring in the needle, which these all do. Sometimes the pivot pin's a bit tight in the carburetor body, so I gently squeeze it in with some pliers. That's better. With all the floats installed, I set my vernier caliper to 24 millimetres, then rest the protruding part on the gasket surface of the, of the carburetor body, with the gasket removed obviously, and it should just slide over the float, just touching it. With all the floats set at 24 millimetres, I replace the gaskets, followed by the float bowls and the four screws.
last thing I did was pick up the bank of carburetors and blow through them one at a time, listening to the hiss. You can detect the slightest difference in sound, and these are all sounded just the same. Perfect. Well, it stopped raining and the sun's come back out, so I go back out into the garden to fit the carburetors back on the bike. I use this special vacuum grease. You just smear it on the inlet stubs and it makes everything slide together nicely. I also smear a little bit on the intake trumpets at the back with the air boxes. It helps it all bend out of the way and slide past the carburetors because there isn't much room. I pick up the carburetors and gently slide them in from the right. It's quite tricky. You have to be forceful but careful, making sure everything bends out of the way, giving it a bit of a wiggle and a push. But eventually, with perseverance, it will slide straight through and pop in place with a nice click. Perfect. That's it, that's perfectly on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is connect up the air filter rubbers by wiggling my finger around until they pop into place. The next thing I do is connect up the six overflow pipes to the carburetors. Then do up the six clamps. I then fit the twin throttle cables and secure in place. I give the throttle a quick twist and it snaps shut. I'm well pleased with that. So the last thing I need to do is connect up the air filter clamps. I then tighten all the screws, fit the petrol tank, refit the side panels and go and get ready for a test ride. I'm really enjoying my ride. Just stopped for some fuel at Hungerford. It's going really, really well. So hopefully that's it sorted now. So over the next few months, get some miles on the bike. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.